The ghosts of the former Republic of Yugoslavia still hide in plain sight. Scattered over the various countries that now take its place are secret bunkers, tunnels and military stations that have since been forgotten, left to be engulfed by nature. You see, at the peak of the Cold War era, countries were developing at full speed systems that would prevent and protect their population from the never-before-seen destruction of a nuclear bomb. Everyone was looking up, wondering if the two superpowers would ever press the red button, while at the same time, all the action was happening deep down, and Yugoslavia was right in the middle of the conflict. On what is now the border between Croatia and Bosnia lies, underneath a mountain, one of the biggest underground air bases in Europe. Zalieva Air Base was a Yugoslav military infrastructure that stored airplanes and artillery since right after the World War II until the end of the Cold War. It also served as an airplane factory and an advanced communication center, with the advantage of being an early warning system for Soviet ballistic missiles. Most powerful European countries had something similar at the time of the two world wars. There was the Swiss aircraft caverns, each with space to accommodate 30 plus airplanes, and the Swedish F-9 Anger, which was designed to withstand a nuclear blast. But what made Zayava unique was its location and sheer magnitude. Although the country would enjoy the benefits of relative peace and free trades, as part of the non-aligned movement, three years after the US unleashed nuclear weapons against Japan, construction began on Zayava Air Base. Protected by the mountain above, it was claimed that this new facility could withstand the direct heat from a 20 kiloton nuclear bomb, the same force as the Fat Man bomb that fell on Nagasaki. The project cost the equivalent of $5 billion of today's money, being one of the largest and most expensive military construction projects that Europe had ever seen. Just to give an idea, its cost is equal to roughly three times the contemporary annual military budgets of Croatia and Serbia combined. In fun fact, if you are probably wondering as I did, how did they manage to gather so much money to fund the construction? Well, they just asked for capital from the World Bank with the excuse that it was going to be used in the construction of new motorways, and voila, you just got yourself enough money to build a colossal military airbase that overshadows any Hollywood's villain headquarters. With concrete and steel blast doors throughout the complex, the base could be airtight sealed to put it on lockdown in case of an emergency, not only to keep things out of the complex, but to keep them in. The underground facility was lined up in semicircular concrete shields arranged every 10 meters to cushion the impact of incoming munitions, and as can be seen with this map, the tunnels went on for 3.5 kilometers, providing the bunker with four entrances protected by 100-ton pressurized doors. The complex included an underground water source, power generators, crew quarters, and it also housed the mess hall that could feed 1,000 people simultaneously, along with stores of food, fuel, and arms, sufficient to last 30 days in case some country dared to attack this impenetrable facility. Fuel was supplied by a 20km underground pipe network connected to a military warehouse on Biak, the nearest city. The airbase was completed in 1968, 20 years after the beginning of its construction, and already in its early stages, it could rival the systems in place by the US and NATO at the time. Serving as a central hub for Yugoslavia's integrated air defense program, the facility featured short-range tracking and targeting radars, and was armed with Soviet 2K-12 surface-to-air missiles, with orders to fire immediately upon anyone attempting to enter without previous authorization. The layout of the base was remarkable as well. It had four entrances and five different runways to ensure that even if some of them would get destroyed in an attack, the remaining ones could easily support the defense mission. The airbase's underground complex, known as Clegg Facility, could house as many as 60 aircraft, seeing that it was 16 meters wide and 12 meters tall. Additionally, the overground territory of the base featured 34 external buildings, including nearby barracks, as well as vehicle garages, workshops, and a radar station situated at the top of the mountain. All of its features were very impressive, but at the same time, they posed a threat to bordering countries, seeing that they had immense potential to dominate the skies around it. So unfortunately, the airbase was destroyed during the Croatian War of Independence from 1991 to 95. The Serbians, afraid that the base could be used against them, 
when Croatia broke out of Yugoslavia, set out a year-long mission to destroy it, and seeing that the complex was so big, even with built-in explosives being detonated for a whole year, Serbia still thought it wasn't enough. So a year later, in 1992, more than 56 tons of explosives were used and the $5 billion airbase was devastated by the blasts, consumed with internal fires. It was even reported that locals living in the nearby city of Biak felt the earth shake and could still see plumes of smoke coming out of the tunnel six months later. Today, extreme caution must be used when visiting the Zayavari field complex in view of the extensive number of landmines on and around the former air base. In 2000, a Bosnian Air Force soldier died when exploring the surrounding area looking for mushrooms. Hopes of reconstruction are slim though, due to the vast amount of capital that would be needed to deploy to repair the facility. Maybe it could follow the example of the Swedish F-9 hangar, which now serves as a museum of aviation in the country. But for this to happen, all the toxic fumes from the explosives and the dangerous mines to civilians would need to be extracted and at least a partial restoration would be needed seeing that the walls and ceilings of the complex are in really bad conditions, full of cracks and holes, getting wider every year due to deterioration and no maintenance whatsoever. But this doesn't mean that the airbase doesn't have a purpose nowadays. The local police and the CPA use the area to train dogs with the use of actual landmines due to the enormous amounts of mines that exist within the complex area. The police forces uses the area of the airbase to train its canine explosive retrieval and they orientate the inevitable tourists that want to explore the base. Although entering the underground facility is possible, it is downright life-threatening. Any attempt to enter into the underground complex carries two basic risks, gases and landslides. There are also occasional immigrants who try to use it as a shelter until they recharge their batteries and keep moving further west, so plans to transform it into an asylum seeker center were scheduled for 2005, but nothing happened. The newest idea comes from the municipality of Biak, which wants to use the runways as a local airport, which could mean that maybe parts of the airbase could be used once again, and if this worked, maybe the idea of making it a museum wouldn't be as far-fetched. But even if none of these plans come to fruition, one thing is certain, this is nothing short of an engineering masterpiece that should be admired and looked after. The Zayeva Air Base inspired multiple other underground air bases throughout the world, all the way from the Israelis underground hangars in the Negev Desert to the massive Taiwanese Chiashan Air Force Base, capable of accommodating 200 aircraft and all the other air bases present in these countries. If you want to see more videos about revolutionary infrastructures, please comment on this video. Don't forget to drop a like if you liked it, subs if you loved it, and thanks for watching it. Obrigado.